Hi everyone, my name is Andre. I'm a researcher studying power systems. Some time ago, I made a video titled Declining Value of Papers in Academia. In that video, I discussed the problems of the publishing pressure and their impact on researchers, especially young researchers. Since then, many students have approached me asking questions such as, should I join academia if it is broken and I don't want to publish many useless papers? I have been thinking about these questions for some time and I have also discussed them with uh, my peers and with more senior colleagues, with professors. What I noticed is that many good professors actually know about the publishing pressure problems. They know that students can be burned out. They know that some researchers can try to cheat and use unethical publishing practices in order to increase their number of papers and citations. But most importantly, they are tired of thousands and thousands useless, low-quality publications flooding their fields. They are tired of reading and reviewing such publications and they are tired of competing with such works. So I noticed that many good professors try to stop playing this publishing game and instead focus on their reputation, social networks, research impact, team development, etc. In this video, I want to tell you three stories that I heard uh, in my field about the publishing pressure problems. And my goal is to show you that academia is not completely broken if you find the right people to work with. So let's begin. The first story that I want to tell you today is from Denmark. It is actually not a story, but rather the opinion of one famous professor from Denmark. I met him in person uh, at a conference and I took that uh, opportunity to ask him what he thought about the publishing pressure. He told me that uh, the publishing pressure is bad and he knows about that and that the number of papers is not the most important thing in academia. Then he mentioned a few names of his postdocs who are successful but publish only two, three papers per year. And he mentioned that uh, this is okay not to publish a lot. I was not very happy with his explanations and example. So I said, okay, you have great talented postdocs and they publish only their own original works. That's okay, no problem with that. But have you heard about PhD students and researchers who published more than 10 papers during their PhDs? Do you know about such practices? At that point, uh, the professor laughed and he said, if a postdoc approaches me and says, I published 10 papers during my PhD, I will answer, thank you, goodbye. I think this is a funny answer, but what he really meant was that he didn't care about the number of papers. He would rather prefer to work with uh, motivated, uh, talented, energetic students rather than with a publishing machine with a suspicious publishing background. And this is the point of today's video. I want to show you that good professors are looking for good people to work with. They are looking for motivated, talented students to complement their teams. They no longer need people only for the sake of publishing. And here we come to the second story from Chile. This is a ridiculous story. It is a bit sad, but very instructive, and I want to share it with you. So the story goes that one university in Chile was looking for a postdoc. They announced a position with a very competitive international recruitment process, uh, which means that many students from all over the world applied for this position. And in the end, one guy got the job. The guy, the postdoc, was uh, not from Chile. He was from another country. He was selected because of the best CV and the highest number of publications and citations. So basically, the committee assumed that he was the best uh, candidate, the best researcher for that role with the greatest experience. Then, unfortunately, after one year, his contract was terminated. Why? Well, because his team and his department was not happy about his research attitude. The postdoc turned out to be a loner with the aim of writing papers. That is, he was not really socializing with others, not supporting others, not contributing to the team. The main focus was only on writing more papers. And as I said, this is a sad story. It shows that some young researchers grow under the publishing pressure and then they believe that their entire career and work should revolve around the number of papers and they keep working only on the number of papers. This story shows that the extreme focus on papers can sometimes backfire. And I believe that many people in academia should know about such stories, not to repeat these kind of mistakes. Now, the last story that I want to share with you is a positive one. It is rather not a story, but a job announcement that I have recently seen in the power systems research community. 
The post was written by Professor Nanda Achua from the University of Melbourne, Australia. And let me show you this message. We can see in this email that the University of Melbourne is looking for three lecturers or senior lecturers. Then in the second paragraph, it is said, our focus is on the quality and impact of the research of the candidates, as well as their ability to work with the power industry and the government. The number of publications is not what matters. I believe this is a great position advertisement. It clearly says that they are not looking for lecturers with hundreds of publications. Instead, they are looking for people with skills, uh, research impact and ability to work with industry and government. I hear this more often now, that professors are looking for researchers with team mentality. This usually means that a researcher should be a responsive person, supporting others, supporting other students, contributing to different projects and activities of the team, having decent public speaking skills and so on. Some departments now realize that they do not need isolated researchers working only on papers. They need uh, people with team mentality, which is good to see. So what to do about the publishing pressure? As I said, uh, many students have recently approached me with questions like, is it still worth pursuing PhD considering that academia is broken? I don't want to play this game and publish many useless papers. Will academia change and become a better place? The point of this video is to tell you that we don't know yet if academia is changing or not, but you can select your own academic path. You can select people to work with. And actually there are many adequate professors who know about the publishing pressure problems. So during your next PhD or postdoc interview, you can ask about this problem. You can say that you want to focus on uh, theory, new models, ideas, experiments, collaborations, but not on the number of papers. See how they will respond to that. Some good professors like to say that their goal is to improve you as a researcher and as a person, which sounds great. But if a professor says that, oh no, you have to publish two papers during your first year, then four papers during your second year, maybe you might want to run away from that team. So my point is, don't be afraid of asking questions about the publishing pressure and the publishing expectations. In fact, that's what I do during my interviews. I will be joining Imperial College London soon, and during that interview, I ask questions about the publishing expectations. I said that I know many people at Imperial College publish a lot. I don't want to publish that much and burn out, so I said, uh, what is your position regarding the expected number of papers per year? And I liked the professor's response. He said that I don't need many papers from you. I would prefer just one paper that could change the world. And then he clarified, uh, don't worry, if we work hard and find something interesting, the papers will come but they are not the priority. I believe this is a great answer and a great research mindset. This is why I'm staying in academia and joining Imperial College London. And I recommend that you do the same. Do some research about your professor's publishing style and reputation, and then during the interview, ask them directly about their publishing expectations. Explain them that you don't want to focus only on papers. Please note that even if you join a team of good professors, this still doesn't solve all the problems of academia. For example, the problem of the declining value of papers will still exist. This means that you can spend few years writing a journal paper and then no one will read it. This is a discouraging experience and this can happen. But if you consider this experience of writing papers and PhD as a growth, as your professional and personal development, then the situation is not that bad. Remember that you don't have to build an academic career. You can write your PhD, then if you want, you can travel and do research for a few years as a postdoc, and then with all that experience, you can leave academia. So if you hear people saying that academia is completely broken, don't think that it is not worth considering PhD and research opportunities. I hope you find today's video useful. Uh, please let me know if you have any other questions about the publishing pressure problems and feel free to suggest any other relevant topics that you would like me to cover. See you soon. Bye.